Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. The Tharsis region on Mars is home to the largest volcanoes in the solar system. However, a team from NASA has recently discovered that there's a volcano that we somehow missed that lies just east of these mammoth peaks. How could we have possibly missed a volcano that's 450 kilometers in diameter and higher than Mount Everest? And more importantly, is there anything buried beneath this volcano that a future colony could make use of? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. So, I hope that this video reinforces the notion that exploring Mars with robots, at least in areas that we regard to be safe enough to land robots, is just not the way to explore the Red Planet. There are so many very exciting and unique things about this world that we have not come anywhere close to getting a good look at except from orbit. In spite of all of the rovers that we have put down on the surface of Mars, we have yet to get a look at the most amazing, the most geologically intriguing, and the most unique aspects of this planet. Why? Well, because it's a rugged area, and we're always concerned about rovers getting stuck or rovers just not landing properly, not having a great landing spot in these very difficult to navigate areas. But still, I mean, there are definitely areas, flat regions, where these kinds of probes could set down. There's no question as to that. The problem is, what happens after that? These rovers get stuck so easily in different types of terrain, and it takes forever to free them from these difficult circumstances. Whereas if you have a human being navigating this type of terrain, well, it's just a hell of a lot easier. A human being can explore a wide variety of terrains without having to worry about getting stuck, damaged, etc. Sure, there could be an accident, you could fall, that sort of thing, but... Really, there are many types of terrain that a human being could navigate quite easily that a rover would have a hell of a time with. And not only that, it would take forever for a rover to climb up these types of terrain because of how we have to handle things with light travel time being anywhere from 8 minutes to 20 minutes. And of course, a round trip light travel time being as long as 40 to 45 minutes it's really difficult to issue precise commands to these rovers and to get areas explored in anything resembling a reasonable time frame. And so that's why we have decades go by sometimes with these vehicles, with them traveling maybe 20, 30 kilometers, something along those lines, something that a human could reasonably do in two or three days, or perhaps even less than that, if they had access to a rover of their own. And nowhere is this situation more apparent than a region called the Labyrinth, the Noctis Labyrinthus, that has been under intense study from a team of researchers over at NASA, and they have made so many startling discoveries. The Noctis Labyrinthus, as you're going to see, is already an amazing and unique region with no parallels here on our planet. There is nothing on Earth that can come close to approximating the wonders that can be found in the Noctis Labyrinthus. But something else that this team has now stumbled across is the fact that this entire region was once a volcano, a volcano taller than Everest that was hiding in plain sight simply because we were always looking at things from orbit where we really can't get the kind of details that we need to get if we want to explore this planet properly. And it is for this reason that we need to not only seriously look at putting human beings on the red planet sometime soon, but colonizing it, a long-term presence, because there is so much to learn. 
It is an absolute crime that we have never had a good look at the Tharsis region on Mars, the highest volcanoes and the largest volcanoes in the solar system. One of the smallest ones that you just saw go by is 18 kilometers tall. Okay, it's not the smallest, but it's definitely more of a mid-sized volcano compared to Olympus Mons. These mountains are absolutely colossal. Even if you compare them to the Hawaiian Islands, including of course the sub-oceanic parts of those volcanoes, it still isn't even close. Pavonis Mons, 12 kilometers in height, and we're only just getting started. So you can understand why we might have missed a volcano that's only, quote unquote, the height of Everest, or a little bit taller than Everest anyway. But this is a region that we have left completely unexplored, at least as far as surface rovers are concerned. We have not had a single rover get anywhere close to these mountains. Here's Arcea Mons, 14 kilometers tall. And also, these things are enormous in diameter as well. 350 kilometers. I mean, that is just gigantic. We're talking a volcano that's larger than the entire state of Indiana. And when you get to Olympus Mons, you're just getting to an entirely different level of volcano. This is, thing is over 300,000 square kilometers, which is bigger than the state of Arizona. And at a height of 22 kilometers, Olympus Mons is higher than the surface ceilings of almost every type of commercial airliner. Only military aircraft can fly higher than the height of Olympus Mons. Of course, you couldn't do that on Mars because there's virtually no atmosphere at this altitude on Mars. And by the way, the caldera on this mountain is absolutely enormous as well. And so this is why it came as such a shock to most planetary scientists at NASA and elsewhere when on March 13th, in a groundbreaking announcement at the 55th Lunar and Planetary Science Conference held in the Woodlands, Texas, scientists revealed the discovery of a giant volcano and possible sheet of buried glacier ice in the eastern part of Mars Tharsis Volcanic Province near the planet's equator. Imaged repeatedly by orbiting space craft around Mars since Mariner 9 in 1971, but deeply eroded beyond easy recognition, the giant volcano had been hiding in plain sight for decades in one of Mars' most iconic regions, at the boundary between the heavily fractured maze-like Noctis Labyrinthus, also known as the Labyrinth of the Night, and the monumental canyons of Valles Marineris, which means the Valleys of Mariner. We were examining the geology of an area where we had found the remains of a glacier last year when we realized we were inside a huge and deeply eroded volcano, said Dr. Pascal Lee, planetary scientist with the SETI Institute and the Mars Institute based at NASA Ames Research Center. By the way, I have done a number of videos about Dr. Lee's work, and this is his latest and perhaps most exciting discovery yet. Several clues taken together give away the volcanic nature of the jumble of layered mesas and canyons in the eastern part of the Noctis Labyrinthus. The central summit area is marked by several elevated mesas, forming an arc reaching a regional high and sloping downhill away from the summit area. The gentle outer slopes extend out to 225 kilometers away in different directions. A caldera remnant, the remains of a collapsed volcanic crater, once host to a lava lake, can be seen near the center of the structure. And incidentally, for those of you who think that this area bears a great deal of resemblance to some of the canyon regions in Utah, for example, like Canyonlands and the types of valleys that are present there, and perhaps this isn't so unique after all, you have to consider that these valleys are up to six kilometers deep whereas the Grand Canyon at its deepest is one and a half kilometers deep. So we're talking Canyonlands on a much, much larger scale. 
In any event, let's continue with the press release. This area of Mars is known to have a wide variety of hydrated minerals spanning a long stretch of Martian history. A volcanic setting for these minerals has long been suspected, so it may not be too surprising to find a volcano here, explained Dr. Shubham, and I'm probably mispronouncing that name, a graduate student at the University of Maryland's Department of Geology and the study's co-author. In some sense, this large volcano is a long-sought smoking gun. In addition to the volcano, the study reports that the discovery of a large 5,000 square kilometer area of volcanic deposits within the volcano's perimeter, presenting a large number of low, rounded, and elongated blister-like mounds. This blistered terrain is interpreted to be a field of rootless cones, mounds produced by explosive steam venting or steam swelling when a thin blanket of hot volcanic materials comes to rest on top of a water or ice-rich surface. So I think we get what the significance of that might be, lots and lots of water ice, at least in the past, and it seems very probably in the present as well. Just a year ago, Drs. Lee Shopham and their colleague John W. Schutt had identified the spectacular remains of a glacier, or relict glacier, through a sizable erosional opening in the same volcanic blanket in the form of a light-toned deposit of sulfate salt with the characteristic traits of a glacier. The sulfate deposit, made primarily of gerocyte, a hydrous sulfate, was interpreted to have formed when the blanket of volcanic pyroclastic materials came to rest on a glacier and reacted chemically with the ice. Breached rootless cones identified in the current study show similar occurrences of polyhydrated sulfates, further suggesting the blistered volcanic blanket may be hiding a vast sheet of glacier ice underneath it. How much glacier ice are we talking about here? Well, at minimum, we are talking about a glacier about six kilometers long, about four kilometers wide, and nearly two kilometers thick. That's a hell of a lot of ice and a hell of a lot of water, even for a very large colony or even a Martian city. And there are other advantages to this region if we're talking about colonizing it as well. We'll get to that in just a moment as soon as we finish this press release because, man, they discovered a lot of amazing things. A well-preserved volcanic lava flow and pyroclastic deposit in the southeastern part of the Noctis volcano, which you're looking at right now, suggests that the volcano remained active even in relatively recent times. The pyroclastic deposit presents blisters at its surface, interpreted as rootless cones or steam vents produced when the height when the hot, rather, pyroclastic materials came in contact with H2O ice. Breaches in the pyroclastic deposit reveal light-toned deposits of sulfate salts, expected products of chemical reactions between pyroclastic materials and ice. The largest light-toned deposit of sulfates in this area had already been described as a relict glacier as it presents a wide range of traits specific to glaciers, suggesting that glacier ice might still be preserved, only protected under a thin layer of sulfate salts. By extension, the rootless cones and other sulfate deposits in this area may be blanketing even more glacier ice. So we could be talking about a much larger deposit of water ice than originally thought. The Noctis volcano presents a large and complex history of modification, possibly from a combination of fracturing, thermal erosion, and glacial erosion. Researchers interpret the volcano to be a vast shield made of layered accumulations of pyroclastic materials, lavas, and ice, the latter resulting from repeated buildups of snow and glaciers on its flanks over time. As fractures and faults eventually developed, in particular in connection with the uplift of the broader Tharsis region on which the volcano sits, lavas began to rise through different parts of the volcano, leading to thermal erosion and the removal of vast amounts of buried ice and the catastrophic collapse of entire sections of the volcano.
volcano. Subsequent glaciations continued after their erosion, giving many canyons within the structure their present distinctive shape. In this context, the relict glacier and the possible buried sheet of glacier ice around it might be remnants of the latest glaciation episode affecting the Noctis volcano. Once again, all very fascinating if we're talking about the unique geology of the red planet, but very, very useful if we're talking about future colonization. But much about the newly discovered giant volcano remains a mystery. Although it is clear that it has been active for a long time and began to build up early in Mars history, it is unknown how early exactly. Similarly, although it has experienced eruptions even in modern times, it is unknown if it is still volcanically active and it might erupt again. And if it has been active for a long time, could the combination of sustained warmth and water from the ice have have allowed the site to harbor life. As mysteries surrounding the Noctis volcano continue to puzzle scientists, the site is already emerging as an exciting new location to study Mars geologic evolution, search for life, and to plan future robotic and human exploration. The possible presence of glacier ice at shallow depths near the equator means that humans could potentially explore a less frigid part of the planet while still being able to extract water for hydration and manufacturing rocket fuel. It's really a combination of things that makes the Noctis volcano site exceptionally exciting. It's an ancient and long-lived volcano so deeply eroded that you could hike, drive, or fly through it to examine, sample, and date different parts of its interior to study Mars' evolution through time. It has also had a long history of heat interacting with water and ice, which makes it a prime location for astrobiology and our search for signs of life. And finally, with glacier ice likely still preserved near the surface in a relatively warm equatorial region on Mars, the place is looking very attractive for robotic and human exploration, said Dr. Lee. So I've spoken many times on this channel as to why this region of Mars is the most ideal if we're talking about future colonization. Number one, it's close to the equator, meaning that the temperatures are a lot more moderate, even at nighttime compared to some of the areas that we've been looking at establishing bases, like on the moon during the lunar night. That being the case, it takes a lot less energy to power up life support, heating, etc. if you're located this close to the equator. It was previously thought, however, that equatorial regions didn't have much in the way of water ice, which is an absolute essential to any colonization effort. This recent discovery proves, or at least it strongly indicates, that this is not the case. That there could be a massive reservoir of water ice ready to be exploited at a very warm and lower altitude region of the planet. And why does altitude matter? Well, the higher you get on Mars, the thinner the extremely thin atmosphere becomes, and the less protection you get from radiation. The atmosphere actually does make a substantial difference when you're talking about lethal radiation levels. And on top of that, the Curiosity rover discovered that if you establish a base or a habitat at the base of a tall cliff, radiation levels drop precipitously. I mean, we're talking by more than 70 or 80 percent if you set up your base in that kind of a location. So the fact that there are so many really, really high cliffs in this region could make a big difference in terms of the amount of radiation that future Mars colonists might have to endure, meaning that you would have less radiation shielding required for your future base if you establish it here. And finally, this is such a unique and magnificent region of the Red Planet. We're talking volcanoes several times taller than the tallest mountains on Earth. We're talking about canyons several times deeper than the Grand Canyon or any other massive canyon that you could think of on our own planet, deeper even than the Marianas Trench. 
Also, this region is likely to be pockmarked with lava tubes, which could be very advantageous for setting up future bases and habitats that would have complete shielding from radiation. And in addition to that, this is a region where Martian life, if it exists, might very likely flourish. So many advantages to this region, a region that has been so woefully neglected in half a century of exploration, it's time to change all of that. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Thank you, TK Rosetta, our latest Patreon supporter. Really, really appreciate you becoming part of our growing family. And as you may know, we have some member exclusive live streams coming up most weekends these days. Please check the description for more information on how to participate in those live streams. And also, don't forget to support the work of Sternstadt Studios, who created that amazing animation of the Tharsis region of Mars with all those fantastic volcanoes. Please subscribe to their channel, and as always, stay angry about space.